Welcome back, Canonites. As you may or may not know, today was the Halo Wars 2 panel at the San Diego Comic-Con. While the details are still sparse and the video of the panel won't be out until next week at the earliest, we were gifted with a Vidoc almost as soon as the panel finished, and boy is it amazing. So let's take a look and break it down. The Vidoc opens with a ton of mashed up shots from throughout the cinematics in the game. There's nothing all that big in them, just samples of what's to come and some of it from previous trailers. The one scene I did find possibly interesting is this one frame, which would seem to show a pillar of smoke rising from what appears to be the Spirit of Fire herself, as if she were attacked. Based on later scenes, that seems extremely likely. After the title, we get into the meat of the Vidoc. The first major clip shows a new AI named Isabel, as she's looking at this big, red, holographic blob thing. I've looked over the scene many times, and I honestly cannot say what the hell it is. It's not organic, but it doesn't look to be UNSC, and doesn't really look like any sort of familiar Covenant design. I would guess that it's probably a banished machine of some kind, but honestly, who knows at this point. Focusing on Isabel, she's a character I'm really looking forward to learning more about. Played by actress Erika Soto, Isabel is a non-military, logistics AI, unlike anything we've seen in the games thus far, short of perhaps Governor Sloan and Halo 5. In the fiction, though, we've actually met a few non-military AI, and even one logistics AI. In Halo Coal Protocol, we meet the AI Juliana, who maintained an artificial habitat known as the Rubble. Some of you may recognize that name as it was mentioned in the Halo 2 Anniversary Terminals. In Halo Contact Harvest, we met Mac, who maintained Harvest's semi-automatic Yotun Harvesters, and our fellow logistics AI, Sif. So, if you want to get a feel for some of the non-military AI out there, check out either of those novels. Ideally both, because they're both really good. Getting back to Isabel herself, she is something I'm truly excited to see. As we see later in the Vidoc, she is found in an empty UNSC outpost where Red Team is following a distress signal. As Kevin Grace explains, she's freaked out. She watched her friends die, her outposts get destroyed, and when found, warns the spirit to get out because of what is still present on the Ark. Isabel looks like she's going to be a lot of fun to get to know, though from what we see in the scene shown, it looks like she's the only AI present. So, this could mean that Serena has indeed passed. That would of course call into question the secret ending for Halo Wars 2 and the line being used in the most recent trailer. My own guess is that Serena left a sort of emergency protocol program in place in case contact with the UNSC was ever made. Another interesting point about Isabel to consider is whether she's aware of the AI rebellion that's going on. From what we see in the trailer, it would seem that, to me at least, she missed out on the whole created uprising. So, anyone who didn't want that stuff in this game can probably breathe a sigh of relief. Anyway, getting back to the Vidoc, we get another series of quick scenes. The first one of interest shows Cutter on the Spirit's Bridge, Anders on the screen behind him, and an alarm blaring in the background. My guess is that this takes place when the Spirit is first attacked by the Banished. Speaking of, the next scene is the Banished attacking the Spirit. We get to see some Banished Banshees attacking, but the most interesting thing is the CAS-class Assault Carrier in the background. It's hull decked out with red lights. These ships already looked intimidating, but the red lights on the darkened hull just make them even more terrifying. While this does confirm the Banished have at least one ship, I have to wonder if this is it or if they have a proper fleet. If the latter, I'd be very curious as to how the Spirit would stand up to the Banished at all. At least if it's one ship, it's... well, one ship. The next few scenes are largely repeats from the most recent trailer, the spirit booting up, Anders and Cutter discussing where they are. There's a little extra footage at the end, but nothing of significance as far as I can tell. During the next few scenes, Kevin Grace talks about how the spirit detects a lone distress signal on the Ark surface, leading to the discovery of Isabel as previously discussed. In my last breakdown, I talked about how I thought the mysterious signal from the forward unto dawn was likely what triggered the waking of the spirit's crew. I'd probably say I was partially right in light of this. I'm still confident that the distress signal is why the Spirit's crew wakes up, though now I'm even more curious as to why the Dawn's call sign appears on the screen here. Anyway, as Red Team is exploring, we can see a post-war UNSC logo on this torn plastic flap. Nothing all that big, just interesting to point out. After all the stuff on Isabel, we get to Atriox, and we see a little more of the fight between Red Team and Atriox, and boy is it good. As Kevin Grace explains, Red Team goes in expecting a brute but get a whole lot more. As we've been told, Atriox is as strong as Brutes are, but also smart and cunning. It's a truly terrifying combination. We get a few more scenes, largely repeats and whatnot, but then we get Anders talking to Cutter about where they ended up, and for me and many others, it was the highlight of the Vidoc. 
Anders first confirms that the Spirit of Fire is indeed outside the galaxy, so the Ark itself likely has not moved. Cutter then goes on to say that there's no way they drifted out of the galaxy in 28 years. This pretty much confirms that they'll explain how the Spirit of Fire wound up over the Ark. At this point, we just have to hope that it's a good explanation. The following scenes look to be the Spirit getting ready either for their first ground mission or for a ground mission against the Banished. You may recall the campaign gameplay footage from a while back. Well, the footage is all said to be from the first mission, and I imagine the first mission is what we're seeing the Spirit prepare for here. And that covers the new footage and info in the trailer, though we're not done just yet. A friend of mine was able to attend the panel in person, you lucky bastard, and tweeted out some very interesting information and pictures. Much of it was repeated in the trailer to one degree or another, but there were a couple interesting images that I do want to share. The first shows the spirit hovering over the Ark, giving us a better look at the surface and that mind to hell core world. The second shows three Covenant ships over the core world surface. One ship is a CAS class, but the other two don't look familiar. The rears look like CCS class battle cruisers, but the fronts look much more bulbous. Could just be perspective though. The last bit of interesting info came from Dustin Pettigrew of Potacular, who was also lucky enough to attend SDCC, you bastard. It's likely we'll get to play as Prometheans in Halo Wars 2 multiplayer. If that means at launch or in DLC is unknown, but for me at least, it's pretty exciting. And that does it for this breakdown. What did you guys think of the footage? Did I miss anything? Get a discussion going in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.